This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The matchups are now set for both the NBA and the Stanley Cup Finals. As Game 1 approaches for both those series, we're going to break down both of them, let you know where to find value in the series prices, and get you ready for Game 1 in the NBA between the Heat and the Nuggets by talking to Tom Vecchio, breaking down his thoughts on both these series and his favorite bets right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for number fire joined here as mentioned by tom vecchio you can check him out on twitter at dfs underscore tom and find all of his work over at numberfire.com and tom the series have been set and it is going to be a glorious couple weeks here how you doing today i'm doing great thanks for having me yeah this is this is it the seasons are coming to a close i would say we have two really good matchups and you know despite what people may say in terms of underdogs making it, you know, two eight seeds in both sports. This is awesome. Both these teams deserve to be here. I am very excited for these matchups to start. Yeah, I don't think you can look at the path the Heat went through and say they don't deserve to be here. Eight seed or not, I don't care what their seed was. Taking out the one seed, taking out the Celtics, that path was legitimate and they're fun to watch. I know that like they're not like the biggest names, but like they're enjoyable. And that's kind of all I care about is like, I don't care, you know, like I don't know enough about like NBA legacy to know, like care about Celtics, Lakers, stuff like that. I just like watching fun teams. And I feel like both the heat and the nuggets for very different reasons. Do check that box. Yeah. Um, I enjoy seeing different types of teams win. And, you know, a lot of people talk about the nuggets uh, where they're like a, a no frills team. They just kind of get the job done and there's like no hype or there's no drama around them, but they're awesome. And yeah. they deserve to be for multiple years of building to get here. It's, it's going to be an awesome series. And Jokic does some stupid stuff in a fun <laughs> way. Like, I mean, like, I mean that in a complimentary fashion, like he does some stupid stuff. So like, it's fun no matter like, what the route is to it. So I'm excited for both these series. We're going to get Tom's read on the series prices. As I said, we'll talk about game one, two as uh, between the heat and the nuggets to get Tom's read on that, to get you ready for what should be a fun week for both the NBA and NHL. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We had Brandon Gadula on yesterday breaking down the uh, Memorial Tournament from a PGA perspective. The timestamp for that is in the episode description over on Number Fire. So check out that uh, and see. Uh, jump ahead to the PGA discussion if you want to get some bets in for uh, before the first tee times coming up for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow I'll have some NFL thoughts here, talking about the way schedules break down. We'll talk some NASCAR and talk some F1, all in the same place as well. So make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. Make a fast break to FanDuel during the NBA playoffs because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. That's one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win there is no better place to bet all the playoff action than america's number one sportsbook fanduel official sports betting partner of the nba must be 21 plus and present in select states first online real money wager only ten dollar deposit required refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Connecticut. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In West Virginia, or in New York, 1-877-HOPE-NY. Or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Let's start things off here by talking about the NBA side of things, Tom. Talking about the Heat and the Nuggets and... We'll talk about the markets in a second, but I just want to get your overall read on this matchup. 
how do these two teams match up for you when you look at them as they face each other? This is always an interesting, interesting question, and I'm not sure there are many teams or players that match up well against Jokic, but what we do know is that Eric Spolstra for the Heat, great coach, all-time coach, going to the Hall of Fame, all these sorts of things. He's great at making adjustments. He's a great he's great at trying to neutralize what the opposing team does best. And, you know, part of this and what I may believe might happen will lead me to one of the props we're going to talk about a li- in, you know, in a few minutes. And ultimately that comes down to is like, what happens if the Heat try and fully sell out and take Jokic out of the game as much as possible? Now we obviously had to say with a bit of a grain of salt because Jokic is still going to have an impact. But like, what if they go all out to stop Jokic? What does that series look like? What do the Nuggets on offense look like? And where does that present value? So I think we're going to see a very like direct and, and concerted effort from the Heat to try and eliminate Jokic, especially with him passing the ball. And I think that should try and limit some of their offensive opportunities overall for the Nuggets. And that leads me to a prop, which again, we'll get to. Yeah, so let's actually take a look at the markets here because right now the Heat are plus 330 to win this series over at FanDuel Sportsbook, and the Heat have been underdogs this entire time. So seeing them at plus 340 now, that's not a huge shock. But, Tom, they keep on upending expectations. And you mentioned Eric Spolster as a coach. He kind of deserves the benefit of the doubt here, I think, in a lot of ways. You can have some faith in rational coaching, which is not always the case in any sport. So when you look at the series price, do you think it's appropriate or are we underselling the heat once again? I think it's pretty appropriate. You know, if it got lower and I do have interest in it, as I said last week, I have the heat at 18 to one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I have interest in this price. If it got lower than 300, I probably wouldn't go near it, but I think it's at a pretty solid spot right now. And I know what everyone's going to say, Oh, the heat, uh, you know, by every metric imaginable regular stats, advanced stats, they were worse than the Celtics and the Celtics should have won that. Well, yeah, that, that's probably true, but the Heat are doing it in a small sample size. And that's and the point that I'm making is that it may not be sustainable for 82 games, but it is sustainable for 10 or 15 games, which they're clearly showing. So I think this price is great, and I have a ton of interest in it. I have a ton of interest in the Heat at plus nine for game one. I have a ton of interest in the Heat as long as they're going to be, you know, six, seven, eight point underdogs in every single game. Is it sustainable for 82 games? Probably not. Is it sustainable for 10 or 15, 20 games? Yes, and it clearly is. So when you're talking about plus 340, let's assume, pretend you don't have 18 to 1 in your pocket for the Heat. Would you add plus 340 if you were in that situation? Yeah. Okay. I I mean, I'm full on the Heat. Okay. I'm on the Heat. I'll be on the Heat basically on every game as long as it's not just like plus 2. Right. And it is plus nine in game one. We'll get to that here in a second. You mentioned that your analysis of hoping that the Heat try to negate Jokic plays into a prop you like for this series. So looking at the props, I think you do in general a very good job of dissecting the optimal market for buying into certain teams. When you take that assumption and apply it to the market, where are you seeing value right now? That assumption, as I said, I think that leads me directly to Jamal Murray MVP prop at 12 to 1. Okay. Because the first off, the the prices for these the MVP odds are dramatic, <laughs> and 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 Jokic rightfully deserves a, a ton of credit for everything that he's doing. You know, averaging a triple double, all these sorts of things. But that price compared to the others is it jumps off the page, and I don't, it's not in a good way. So again, if we're going under, at least this is just my personal assumption. Like, what happens if the Heat sell out and try and eliminate Jokic as much as possible? Where does the Nuggets offense go from there? And this is also, again, somewhat on the assumption that you do think the Nuggets will win, right? You do think that they are the better team. So uh, although I have the, the Heat to win, I do understand that the Nuggets are an awesome team. And if that leads me to saying, okay, yes, the Nuggets can win this series, but the Heat are still going to do a very good job. That leads me to Jamal Murray at 12th one, which again, the odds imply that it's Jokic as this elite option. And then it's kind of just all these role players on the floor with him. And that's not really the case. Jamal Murray is awesome. So if I like the the Nuggets to win, I think this is somewhat of a hedge off of the bet that I have at what I'm going to say is awesome value. Murray can go out there and drop 30 points every game. And do you think that the Heat have the the bodies to negate Jokic, or is it mostly just just faith in Eric Spolstra that that makes you think there's a path to 
Murray being like the guy for this series? So it's a bit of both. Bam Adebayo is a good defensive center. He's always up at the top of the market when it comes to defensive player of the year, but Jokic is better on offense and better at what he does than Adebayo is on defense. And Adebayo is a very good defender. I also think uh, in just an overall scheme, if Bam Adebayo is going to be getting in foul trouble, just because again, they're trying to sell out to guard Jokic. This is going to have me very interested game by game in uh, Bam Adebayo unders, points, under rebounds, just because he's, he may not be out on the court a lot. They're going to have to rotate in Zeller. They're going to ro- rotate in Kevin Love. So it's just it's going to be an overall mindset of saying, if I believe the Heat are going to do this, how can I extrapolate that to all of these props throughout the entirety of the series? Now, it, again, it's, it's Murray MVP, unders on Bam Adebayo. Okay, so we're liking Jamal Murray MVP at 12-1. to 1. Now, other... I think noteworthy uh, MVP market is Jimmy Butler at uh, plus 430 because the Heat to win this series are plus 340. What are the odds, Tom, that they win this series and Jimmy Butler is not the finals MVP? Like, I was gonna I was gonna bring that up. Like, just curious. Do we always can we always find those differentials of saying, like, you know, if you got Mahomes at, you know, right. four to one to win the MVP and the should have been the, Isaiah Pacheco, <laughs> you know, and the Chiefs were what were they minus 110 or minus 120? It's like, well, if the Chiefs win, you know, we're getting Mahomes is probably going to win MVP. So why not just bet on MVP or whatever? So I think that this is exactly along the same lines where if you like the heat to win, you might as well just bet Jimmy at four to what is it? Four and a half to one or, or plus four, plus four thirty. Yeah. Plus four thirty because that's better than the plus three thirty or plus three forty price. So just go with Jimmy. I'm, I'm totally on board with if X happens, how does that get accomplished? Well, it's probably because Jimmy's doing a lot. Right. So Jokic is minus three forty in the MVP market. Butler is plus four thirty. Murray twelve to one, and the heavy, heavy enthusiasm around Jokic is what leads to Tom potentially seeing value there in both Butler at plus four thirty, but Murray primarily is the big one at twelve to one. Let's shift our focus now and talk specifically about Game One out in Denver. Of the Nuggets as nine point favorites, total in this game is two nineteen and a half. And Tom, when you look at the game. You said you have interest in the Heat plus nine. Is that the primary read for you on uh, game one? Anything else stand out to you here? Yeah, definitely going to be taking the Heat at, at plus nine. I ultimately expect either game one or game two, we're going to see a lot of scoring. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to have a, a little bit of an outburst just because the energy, the excitement, whatever it might be. We're going to have a, a bit of an outburst in game one. And then that's the time that I'm just going to lean on unders for the rest of the series. I think the market will overreact. You know, we have seen the Heat shoot well from three. We have seen the Nuggets shoot well from three, you know, to this point in the playoffs. So maybe they stay hot a little bit, and then we will see adjustments as the series goes on. So if we see, like, a a, a 220-212 final, uh, excuse me, 120-112 final uh, in the first game or second game, that's the point that I want to start shifting to a lot of unders because I think that's just a natural thing given the coaches that we have. So I do like the Heat in game one. And, again, I'll be taking them at, at six – plus basically every single game as long as they're there. So we uh, look at the props here. You mentioned the Adebayo unders under the assumption that maybe, you know, he's just going hard against Jokic and stuff like that. That could restrict things. What do you use the optimal market for taking unders there for Adebayo? Are you just kind of looking at PRA bets um, to kind of encompass everything? What do you think is the best route for an Adebayo under? It would be PRA or points. Unders on rebounds are obviously a little bit fluky because he could be out there, you know, just grabbing rebounds in terms of the, I think the points is a little bit safer because they may not make him the focal point of the offense. Right. Just because whatever they might be doing uh, in terms, you know, getting the ball to Caleb Martin, who's been good. Obviously Jimmy's getting plenty of looks. Duncan Robinson coming off the bench, whatever it might be points is probably my least favorite or points is probably my favorite to go. And just yeah. because it's not what they're going to be doing. PRA is definitely on the table as well. If I had to choose one, I don't know. I'd probably just come down to points. Yeah, points is under 16 and a half is minus 120. The PRA is a 28 and a half right now uh, for Adebayo. So shop around there. Maybe you can apply the Jamal Murray assumption to game one as well. If you think that uh, Spolstra comes in with a great game plan for game one and things like that. Any final thoughts for you on this series, Tom, before we uh, head over to the NBA, the NHL? Yeah, I, I do like Michael Porter Jr. over 15 and a half points for this game one. Uh, he's been shooting the ball well from three, you know, throughout the playoffs. It's right at 40 percent, which is certainly high, but that's where his season average was. That's basically where his career average was. So he's not overperforming, underperforming in any way. 
This is a prop that, again, I would look to take early in the series because as it shifts and we see you know more and more defensive changes, that's where we start to lean on unders. But he's shooting the ball eight, nine, ten threes a game. And even if he's inefficient in some capacity, three of ten from the field, which is obviously below his average, he's still going to be able to get to a spot where he should be at, be at this mark. And this also kind of goes under that assumption of I'm expecting higher scoring in game one or game two. So I want to kind of take props that reflect that and then shift to unders as we move on. Okay, so Tom is on the Heat plus nine, potentially on the Heat to win the series. Looking at Jamal Murray, MVP 12 to one. Jimmy Buckets, MVP at plus 430 as well. And then checking out some props there uh, with some Bam out of bio unders. But Michael Porter Jr., over 15 and a half points, minus 122 right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's shift focus now and talk about the NHL. The Stanley Cup finals are set here between the Vegas Golden Knights and the Florida Panthers. There has been some interest in the Panthers because the Golden Knights were minus 140 yesterday. They are now minus 135 to win the Stanley Cup. So, Tom, looking at the series prices first, anything you like for the Knights and the uh, Panthers? What's your overall read on this series? Well, right from the jump, the lines are too efficient at this point to have interest in either team. And ultimately, I think it's going to be a bit of a coin flip, especially how we see mm -hmm. both of these teams playing. So because I have no interest in a side, that leads me to probably total games of what we're going to be seeing. And it's, you know, six games, I think, is has been my sweet spot for a while where I don't care who wins. It's six games. It's not like we're going to see a, a team sweep. You know, plus 198, I think, is a, is a good spot for uh, total games. Um, you know, it's what we should be expecting in, in the Stanley Cup. Four games is, is not an, uh, not enough. Five games is not enough. We rarely see Stanley Cup finals going seven games, and then we can get it there. So it's under total games about halfway down. Yeah. So I like it at plus 198. I don't think it should be too much longer. I think it has the best probability of hitting based on where we see some of these odds lying. I don't have a particular take on who's going to be winning. And I think this kind of falls in line with I'm expecting good series. I don't care about the outcome. I'm shooting for a decent amount of plus money here. Yeah, it's plus five, five, 580 for a sweep. So that's good. That's encouraging. You know, we don't want that. We don't want to deprive ourselves of hockey too quickly here. Plus 198 for six games, plus 194 for seven games. So we're not buying into any of the series prices. That's kind of the one read on uh, the the series props. But any other like angles you're going into with this series, Tom? Any particular players you think uh, could be in a good position? Any specific assumptions you like going into the series? What are you looking at here for these two teams? So if you uh, two sections above is series total goals, yeah, which is at thirty three and a half. So that's, you know, assuming a five and a half total for every game. And if this goes in line with how many games I expect the series to go, I think we can kind of use these markets together to, you know, kind of extrapolate. Okay. If it's going to be, go if you think it's going to be going seven games, you should be taking the over. I think this is a, a clear under if we get that five and a half line at exactly six games. Now, of course, if it, if some team sweeps or goes only five games, we're going to be sitting pretty because we're going to be in a pretty good spot. Based on how both goalies are playing right now, specifically Bobrovsky for the Panthers, he's performing at a level we've basically never seen. And, you know, digging into some of his advanced stats, we're looking at goal save above expected on this, you know, 12, 15 game stretch, whatever it is throughout the playoffs, he's performing at a level, you know, we've literally never seen from goalies looking back 10 plus years since we've had this goal save above expected data through any point of any goalie, regular season or playoffs, he's performing at such a high level. And Aiden Hill on the other side for Vegas, just given the way that they play defense, which I've talked about time and time again, they do such a good job at insulating him and protecting him because the system that they use with Bruce Cassidy, the head coach for Vegas, is just so strong top to bottom that he's always going to be in a good spot to succeed. We saw it in game six against Dallas. They had a shutout in a, in a cl series clinching game when Dallas needed to sell out for every goal, every shot, and they couldn't even score a goal. So because we have these two goalies and, and really strong systems overall, I love the under. And it's going to be under in every single game, and it's going to be under in total goals in the series, and it's going to be six games because I think all of this lines up. The total goals market, as you mentioned, uh, 33 and a half. Minus 110 is the under on that one. And I think the reason that that is a fun way to go, Tom, is that there are multiple paths. Because you mentioned it could be a sweep. We don't know. 
if it's a sweep, you're probably hitting the under here because 33 and a half goals in four games is tough to get to. You have multiple paths. Even if the sweep is not the most likely scenario, plus 580 is still, you know, 13 or percent of, or so implied. Oh, well, a little bit higher right. than that. Um, trying to do math on the fly, which is yeah. not my, my strength. But like, it's a decent chance, which gives you one path there. Or it could be just, you know, Bobrovsky, he's playing out his mind. The Vegas defense keeps doing what they've been doing. I like that there are multiple paths there. Now, the total for game one is five and a half minus 104 on the under. And it sounds like based on what you're saying, that to you is a pretty strong bet as well. Absolutely. And again, the, the this is we, we saw it in the I would say specifically in the Canes Panther series where the and, and the quote that uh, Paul Maurice, the head coach for the the Panthers, used at his introductory press conference last year when he was hired was last year the, the Panthers won the President's Trophy. They were literally one of the best offenses in the league, and they got kind of bodied by the Lightning in the playoffs last year. And what he said in his press conference was, "I don't want to put mud tires on a Ferrari," referring to their <laughs> offense. He said they have to learn how to drive in the rain. That was a quote that he used. And he says, like, they're an awesome offense. We can't hinder that. But we just have to play a little bit different when it comes to the playoffs, being able to adjust to different outcomes and different elements. And that's what they're doing, where instead of just being this all-out offense, they're being an offense that is uh, very, like, very calculated. And they're taking the right risks in, instead of just selling out for winning games 7-5. to five, They're trying to win games 3-1 to one or 2-1. to one. So I love the under, and that yeah. really – reflects everything with with the way Bob Brovsky's playing, the way Aiden Hill is playing. I'll sign me up every day. Mud tires on a Ferrari. That's what he says. Like you don't want to they have such an last year their offense was unbelievable and they added Matthew Kachuk. And he's yeah. saying you don't want to like you you can't force Patrick Mahomes to run the ball 40 times. Yeah. Right. You have to let him shine, but you also have to let him shine when it's appropriate, taking the deep right. shots when it's necessary and when the circumstances allow it. And that's what the Panthers learned how to do this year. They learned how to fight for better goals instead of every goal. Right. And that's, you know, keeping with the Ferrari thing and talking to Formula One. That's why Max Verstappen ran away with the Formula One title last year is he found out when to push, when not to. He had a fast enough car where he could do that. Uh, but like, you know, that's a skill, learning how to do that, learning how to uh, go at the right pace, not always be 100%. It's, a, it's definitely a skill. Okay, so looking at uh, some low scoring series here for Knights and Panthers. Any final uh, final thoughts for you on this Stanley Cup yeah. Finals top? One player prop for leading goal scorer throughout the series. And I think this is interesting because, you know, theoretically it is independent of the outcome of the series. There is some correlation to say if this player is scoring a lot, that team should be winning games. Therefore, that could indicate you of which way you – you know, you would lean in the series, but Jonathan Marshall show at seven and a half to one is really, really interesting. He has nine goals, which is the second most on Vegas uh, throughout 17 games. William Carlson has 10 goals uh, leaving Vegas. Matthew Kachuk also has nine goals for the Panthers and his odds are, what are his odds there? 390. Four. Three, so that that also, again, that differential, I think, is, is pretty massive when they have the exact same amount of goals th throughout the playoffs. So I like taking that little bit of a longer shot of a player who plays on the top six, who plays on the first power play, who is a primary shooter. Now, this is somewhat, again, contradictory to me saying I don't have a, a specific take. This would, again, lean me to Vegas slightly if I'm expecting Marsha Show to be a high scorer. But – Leaning to Vegas slightly is also in line with the markets because the markets have Vegas at minus one thirty five. So right. it's not like you're taking a stand there. You're just saying the markets are efficient. And and theoretically, Marsha Show could lead the series, but the Panthers still win. Sure, exactly. So I, I kind of like this just to have a, a player prop rooting interest uh, throughout the entirety of the series. Okay, so Marcheseau is 750 to lead uh, the series in goal scoring over at FanDuel Sportsbook. But Tom. It's going to be a fun ride across both this NBA and the Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, thank you for joining me once again. I appreciate it. Uh, have some fun. I'm sure we'll check back in with you next week, talk more about uh, these series as they continue. But until then, uh, have some fun watching these. Appreciate your insights as always. And good luck with your bets for game one on Thursday. Thanks for having me.
All righty, check out Tom on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. Check out his work over at Number Fire. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Back again tomorrow talking some NFL schedule analysis and also talking some NASCAR and F1 for this weekend. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 